I want to talk to you today about something that is very unpopular opinion regarding filler and dissolving filler and something that is very counterculture revolving around how to manage that filler around surgery. This is something I gave a talk on recently at the facial plastics meeting and I told you guys I would update on the latest and greatest of these unpopular opinions. Starting with filler and unpopular opinions about filler. Number one, filler lasts decades. It does not last a year or two. It does not need to be touched up all the time. It lasts decades. We know that from MRI studies. We know that from histology studies, biopsying the filler, and we know it from direct observation of that filler in tissue. There is no question this filler is not going away quickly. I don't care what type of hyaluronic acid filler you say you're injecting or how long it lasts. I hear it every single week. My injector said, there's no way this filler is going to be left. And I always find it. And I always take a video so you can go show your injector. That filler is still there years or decades after it was injected that very first time. On a very interesting side note, those same MRI studies and those same histology studies show that that filler migrates. I did a study with one of my fellows a few years back and we did a study on 50 consecutive lip lifts where women had had it injected into their lips and on the subnasal region of their excision, filler was present on 49 of the 50 of those histologically proven. That filler is migrating through that muscle. It does not stay where it's put. All of this that I'm talking about regarding filler and filler duration and dissolving is all related to hyaluronic acid fillers, which are the ones that are supposed to dissolve and go away the fastest. It's a whole different story when we start talking about semi-permanent fillers, permanent fillers, and biostimulatory fillers like Radius and Sculptra, things like that. Different story. Unpopular opinion number two about hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase is the enzyme that is supposed to magically dissolve the magic wand that just gets rid of the hyaluronic acid filler if you don't like it, we can just dissolve it. Here's the unpopular opinion. Hyaluronidase works, but it doesn't work that well. It's certainly no magic bullet, and it doesn't come without a bit of a price to your tissue. This is where I really start to lose some of my colleagues and injectors who believe that hyaluronidase has no issues with tissue whatsoever. There's nothing that proves that. Well, that's not entirely correct. And in animal models, hyaluronidase is shown to dehydrate tissue and change the biomechanics of tissue. It is not different in our skin. It does change the way that our skin and soft tissue fat pads behave. It changes their biomechanics and it changes how they function during surgery. We see that all the time. If we even think back to the history of hyaluronidase use in local anesthetic, that's often cited. Hyaluronidase was used forever in local anesthetic very safely. What was the mechanism of its use? It was used to break down the extracellular matrix and allow that anesthesia to spread faster. It was doing what many people think it doesn't do. It was breaking down that tissue, allowing the anesthesia to spread faster. That's the point. The hyaluronidase has a detrimental effect on the local tissue. That doesn't mean we can't recover from it. And when I see issues with it, it tends to be people who are injected with it very frequently in very high doses. So if we can manage the dose, and we can manage the frequency, we can still use hyaluronidase very safely, but we have to be very cautious about it. And that leads into my total counterculture, unpopular opinion number three, and that involves how to manage the filler before surgery. This is where I do things a little bit different, and this gets a lot of gasps. I don't dissolve filler before surgery on a regular basis. The reason I don't do that is because I can manually remove so much of that filler during our procedure that I can get a very excellent visualization as to how much filler is left behind, how much I was able to remove manually. I know exactly where it's at, I visualized it, and I can really minimize the amount of hyaluronidase that I need to use. So number one, I'm able to limit one of those big things. I'm able to limit the dose that I'm giving. I can keep it as minimal as possible. And from a frequency standpoint, often it's the only one I'll ever need. That leads into the fact though that hyaluronidase does not work that well. It is not perfect. Even after really good manual removal and even after very targeted, focused dissolution, knowing exactly where it is, it is not all gone. It is not perfect. And that is one of the issues regarding filler around surgery. It causes tissue changes from a tissue expansion effect. It causes a change in the way our lymphatic strains, it plugs our lymphatics. We don't even know for sure if hyaluronidase can really improve the way that our lymphatic strain by getting rid of the hyaluronic acid that's in those lymphatics. But we do know that people have longer durations of swelling after surgery. They just tend to have a little bit more downtime. And that's something that we need to plan for. But that's also one of those reasons that I like to manually get out as much filler as I can to limit that hyaluronidase dose. All of the pre and perioperative management protocols for filler are based off expert opinion. This is how different experts do it. Well, this is how I do it. This is another expert opinion getting thrown in there. 
a little bit counterculture to the other ones of dissolving aggressively before surgery. I don't like the tissue changes that happen with that aggressive dissolution before surgery. I want to see the filler in the tissue. I want to get out what I can manually, and I want to be able to very precisely and very accurately target the filler that's left behind from a location standpoint and from a dose of hyaluronidase that I'll need to get that accomplished standpoint. With those tissue expander effects is one reason that I really like to use regenerative medicine with patients who've had prior filler that's getting dissolved. That regenerative medicine aspect improves the tissue quality, the tissue that was damaged by the filler, and it makes our outcomes better. That filler does quite a bit to our native tissue. It integrates into that tissue. It expands that tissue. It changes the way that it looks and feels and functions surgically. We call it hyalinized. Oftentimes I'll find these little encapsulated areas of filler that are like a breast implant stuck in the fat pads around the eye or stuck in the cheek, these nodules that are not going anywhere with hyaluronidase. I love these videos when I show these. These things I have to cut into them to get into them. There is no way that even if the hyaluronidase did have contact with it, that it would have any way to dissolve the filler that's stuck in the middle of these particular capsules. So the filler changes the tissue dynamics as well. This is a really hot topic. This is really counterculture. It's really unpopular opinion. Please, please, please start an intelligent dialogue with your thoughts and feedback in the comments below.